Good day everybody. Throughout your lifetimes, you have definitely seen art being used for political purposes, be it for candidates or political parties in order to promote their agenda. Perhaps you've seen it in history books where you have to analyze a political poster or maybe on the streets where you see posters which provide information regarding individual candidates. Now that is what I want to talk about today, namely, whether art is still relevant in the 21st century. Does it remain an effective method of political campaigning? And if so, how? Now let's get on with this video. First we need to define what art is. According to Oxford languages, art is the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. For our purposes, in order to keep the video within an acceptable time frame, we will be covering static visual arts, so posters and images specifically. Art is very bro broadly defined. You can include videos, sculptures, and so on in art. and we can talk an entire day about them, but for our purposes, we'll stick to posters and images. Now, political art has come a long history since roughly the 1800s. The first color posters that we know today appeared in the mid 19th century when the printing industry was able to perfect color printing, resulting in the possibility of mass production. Almost immediately, were color posters produced for political purposes. As you can see here at the bottom left, here is a political poster, a colored one, of Abraham Lincoln and Hannibal Hamlin, made for their 1860 presidential campaign. It should be noted, however, that black and white posters, usually in the form of sketches, have appeared decades earlier, with John Quincy Adams in 1824 being the first known candidate to widely use posters. Though a William Henry Harrison poster from his 1840 campaign is the earliest preserved poster to be preserved by Congress. Nevertheless, color posters used for political purposes only became widespread and popular during and after the First World War, usually to raise war bonds, like in this poster at the bottom right, but also to inform on wartime wartime routines that people have to adhere to and of course to boost the political cause such as most famously with the National Socialist Party in Germany who made widespread use of imagery to promote their campaigns. The next stage of evolution in political posters came in the 1960s when with the rise of pop art posters became more widespread among the youth and the standard of design for posters was generally simplified, with many examples of them featuring only a single face and just captions with a few words or even just one. A famous example of such imagery can be seen in Barack Obama's 2008 political poster that became famous and which you can see down here in, at the bottom left. It features a face of Obama superimposed on a blue and red background, and at the bottom of the poster, there's the simple word, hope. Now let's get to the main point of this video, namely political art in the 21st century. With the rise of the internet, memes have become a new form of visual art similar to the posters that we have seen up to this point. They spread a candidate's message and are intended to engage the new youth who barely have time to involve themselves with politics, but is able to catch their attention enough to spread a message on the internet where they are involved on a daily basis. The first political campaign in the US to widely feature memes was the 2016 election. And a notable aspect with this new phenomenon is that many art or memes are no longer issued by a campaign but made by a campaign's fan base, such as this meme featuring Donald Trump saying, in reality, they're not after me, they're after you, I'm just in the way. Such memes usually have obscure origins in terms of the creator, so no one knows who really made them. 
but they are usually spread first on sites such as Reddit and then eventually on Twitter where they eventually catch the campaign's attention and spread as a message. Nevertheless, classic color posters are still widely used for political activities such as protests, which take place outside of the internet. Now let's move on to the main issue we are going to cover. Should political memes be regulated? Now, memes have been widely used to spread conspiracy theories as well, political conspiracy theories, which are basically evolution from spreading the message of a campaign. They have spread disinformation, most notably regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, which has become politicized, and QAnon, which is a conspiracy theory that a deep state is planning to overthrow the Trump, was planning to overthrow the Trump presidency. Some of these theories have led to deaths, like for instance, during the January 6th storming of the Capitol, in which QAnon believers played a notable role in organizing the protests. Therefore, it has become an issue as to whether memes should be regulated in order to prevent such violence from occurring ever again. On the pro side of the argument, the optimization of content, including memes, by algorithm means that a user is likely to consume such content from one side of the political spectrum only and not the other, thus causing an asymmetrical polarization if the user is not forced to view the other side's stance on an issue. This actually comes from my personal experience on social media, specifically on Instagram. As you can see, it didn't really take me long to find content from conservative media outlets. And as you can see, if I scroll down uh, or even continue looking downwards, I don't really encounter any content from the opposing political spectrum. So yeah, that's a problem that we need to be wary of. Also, when consuming memes, people are generally more concerned with their humorous effect instead of the truth or falsehood behind them tend to ignore whether a meme is true or not and are often oblivious to that out of ignorance based on their political opinions or also the wish to not ruin the humor of the meme. Humor, which is important nowadays, especially in an age where depression is widely spread on the internet. Most importantly, memes have caused radicalization in which users are first exposed to extreme political art on the internet and are primarily interested in their origin, leading them to radical online communities in which they eventually become a part of. And also as a side note, memes might also feature copyrighted images used without permission from the artist. This is why the European Union enacted Article 13, which regulates memes based on their copyright. Now, on the contra side of the argument, people argue that if memes are regulated or banned, including the characters on them, which have become, in addition to that, a symbol for a certain ideology or faction, radical faction, then these said radical factions will merely move on to another meme or another symbol, such as the case with Moon Man, Moon Man was originally a character known as Mac Tonight, made by McD McDonald's to promote dinner sales. Ho however, in the late 2000s and the 2010s, Moon Man became a symbol for the odd right and became the subject of memes, such as the one you see here at the top right. Here you see a meme of Moon Man superimposed next to a sign that says Late Night Odd Right. And also a very important point that people often mention is that regulation is an infringement on free speech. It is something that is considered inviolable at any costs, at all costs, even if it may be offensive. Such a protection of free speech is even enshrined in the US Constitution with the First Amendment. Now to conclude the video, I believe that Free speech should be protected without interference from regulations. 
On the other side, however, people need to also be educated in order to understand political art, especially memes that they encounter on the internet on a daily basis. And they should be wary of disinformation and other malicious content in order to create a healthy environment for memes to thrive, but also to make sure that they don't be they don't get appropriated for malicious purposes. That's my video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you and have a nice day.